Hey everyone, welcome to today's video in which we will be breaking down a Jax game from Cloud9's top laner Licorice. In this video, we're going to look at some key concepts for playing the laning phase in order to maximize your chances of winning. The key concepts we will be looking at today are utilizing a level advantage, using a minion advantage, identifying and using resources, and finally, base timing. As we move into the lane, we'll be keeping an eye out for Licorice utilizing these key concepts. First, it's important to take inventory of the lane matchup and each champion's strengths. As Jax is up against a Camille, it will be crucial for Licorice to use his E, Counter-Strike, as efficiently as possible. Due to Camille's true damage on her Q, it is imperative that he uses Counter-Strike defensively to mitigate the enemy laner's huge damage potential. Licorice will be at a slight damage disadvantage for much of the early lane, which means he will need to be careful not to overextend, even if he's able to find small advantages. Simply put, he may look to find a lead using methods other than killing or even damaging his lane opponent. Here is the first example of one of our key concepts, using a level advantage. Licorice hits level 2 and is at an advantage against his lane opponent. It is important to note that due to Camille's inherent early game advantage that we previously discussed, it's not always the right call to immediately jump in on the enemy laner. Instead, Licorice opts to focus on getting uncontested last hits to scale quicker in order to find his power spike in lane. The one thing I would improve about Licorice's strategy here would have been to walk up and contest the enemy last hits during this experience advantage. Because Licorice has simultaneously built up a minion wave, if the enemy laner tries to trade with him to get last hits, they will take a huge portion of damage from minions and lose the trade. Though Licorice didn't use his experience and minion advantage to the fullest of its potential, he instead touched on another one of our points, using and identifying resources. Opting to use his push to place a ward and build up his minion wave even more, Licorice does two important things. First, he ensures that he is not currently being ganked. Because it's near the 3 minute 30 second mark, he knows that if the enemy jungler was going to gank, now would be a good time. This ward would spot out any gank as he finishes his push, allowing him to build his lead up even more. Second, by fully pushing the wave to the enemy tower, he leaves his lane in a position where it will reset, allowing him to identify and secure additional resources. Many other lower skilled players would simply sit in the brush and lane and wait for the lane to push back. Instead, Licorice immediately walks down the river to take Scuttle Crab, building up his gold and experience even more, and more importantly, providing him vision for any other gank that may come in the next several minutes. This will allow him to play more aggressively and build up his lead. By previously pushing the wave all the way into the enemy tower, Licorice makes sure it will reset, giving him the edge and experience gained, which will allow him to have a level advantage at a later point in the lane. If you decide to employ this strategy, it's extremely important you only roam down the river for information when you're certain you won't miss any experience from minions, otherwise your efforts might be for nothing. Having a minion lead puts you in an extremely strong spot in lane, allowing you to bully the enemy laner from getting last hits of their own by positioning aggressively. Almost immediately, Licorice's previous efforts pay off. He's able to spot the enemy jungler in the river, signaling him to play back and ask his own jungler for assistance. This allows him to counter an incoming gank and safely farm under his tower. By posturing defensively, Licorice identifies the flip side of our key concepts and plays accordingly. Just like you want to capitalize on your own level and minion advantages, the enemy will likely be looking to do the same when they're given the opportunity to do so. In order to remain safe and not give up an advantage, you must be aware of this and be able to act accordingly. In this specific situation, the enemy team has a much larger minion wave and a level advantage. Therefore, the correct play is just what Licorice does, farming safely and continuing to build up your own resources until you can take a favorable fight. Licorice demonstrates our final concept here by looking for an opportune time to base. As he has been able to warn off the enemy jungler and build a decent lead, this means that if he pushes the wave slightly and recalls, he will be at a gold advantage and able to purchase stronger items than his opponent should they decide to match his recall. This is critical to capitalizing on a lead. If you never go to base to spend your gold but your opponent does, it doesn't matter what lead you've built up because their newly purchased items will negate all of your previous hard work. Jax is able to match the enemy recall and push the wave in fully, yet again building up his farm lead, minion wave pressure, and allowing him to place a control ward to prevent any incoming ganks. Due to Licorice knowing the correct timing on when to push and when to use his level advantage to trade, he's able to hit level 6 quickly 
and begin pressuring the enemy's life total. Although he is still not dealing much more damage in trades, he can now go toe to toe with Camille, buying him more space in the lane and forcing the enemy jungler to keep eyes on him. Licorice is able to use his previous information from warning to know that the enemy jungler is coming for a gank and he acts perfectly. Pushing his lane in fully, he's able to position himself in the perfect spot to react alongside his teammates to gain priority over Camille when roaming to the river. Because he gets there first, he's able to turn the tides in his team's favor. As soon as Licorice sees the enemy jungler go onto his ward, he jumps in with his team, picking up an uncontested verse blood that would not have been possible without the position he worked so hard for. Because he now has a sizable minion advantage and does more damage, Licorice sees an opportunity to isolate the enemy laner and jumps in. Because he knows he has a follow up of his Aramis if necessary, Licorice once again identifies his potential resources and uses them, forcing the enemy Camille to fight him one on one. He narrowly avoids death, blows the enemy flash, and picks up a kill in the process. By using all of these key concepts, Licorice was able to build up a massive lead for himself in lane and end the lane phase with two kills for himself without giving up any resources to the enemy laner. Overall, using the strategy of utilizing a level advantage and identifying resources outside of his lane, Licorice was able to dominate his lane opponent and bring himself into an excellent position moving into the mint game. Let's quickly review what Licorice did well in this lane. First, he started trading with the enemy laner only when he had a minion advantage, making sure he could go toe to toe with the enemy Camille despite her having more damage. Second, he isolated opportunities to obtain and use resources, taking Scuttlecrab to find an experience and gold advantage. Then finally, he waited until he was positive he would win an all-in trade, jumping on the enemy laner to secure a narrow 1 vs 1 victory. By using all of these concepts together, Licorice was able to find a massive lead that will allow him to carry his team to a victory. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to look out for these strategies as Licorice implements them at the 2018 World Championship. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.